Known as Port Ferry, you would expect the town of Port Ferry to have ships day in and day out, with a bustling rail industry to go along with it. But that role was unfortunately filled by the big port of Geelong, which meant the plans once envisioned for Port Ferry were fulfilled. Soon, the Port Ferry rail line wasn't needed and fell out of the general public's mind, before partially closing in 1977. In this week's video, we will be covering the Port Ferry line's history, closure, branch lines, rolling stock, accidents, services, where it is today, and will services resume. History Opened in 1857 from Melbourne to Geelong by the Geelong to Melbourne Rail Company, the line was sold to Victorian Railways in 1860. In the hands of Victorian Railways, it was extended to Winchelsea in 1876, Colac in 1877, Camperdown in 1883, and Port Ferry in 1890. Unfortunately, disaster struck when a fatal accident occurred on the first run. Electric trains ran to Williamstown and Williamstown Racecourse in 1920 and the Port Ferry line was progressively duplicated from the 1950s to the 1980s. In 1981, suburban trains reached Laverton and then Werribee three years later. In 1981, suburban trains would now go via the Altona Loop, which had been recently extended and electrified to Laverton. In 1993, due to the Loney Report axes, the Warnable line would now be run by the private operator West Coast Rail. In 2012, regional trains to Geelong and Warrnambool would go via the newly constructed Regional Rail Link, which took regional trains off the Werribee line, and instead making them go via the developing western suburbs. In that same year, a couple of crossing loops were also added on various locations on the Warrnambool line. In 2004, 6, and 2014, Marshall, Sherwood Park, and Warner Ponds all received new railway stations, and long-haul velocities would start running on the Warrnambool line. All of these were part of the Regional Rail Revival Scheme. Closure. Many branch lines built off the Port Ferry line have been closed, including the Port Ferry line itself, which now terminates at Warrnambool, and was closed in 1977. The small branch lines were mostly closed in the 1950s and 60s. Many sidings and yards were also closed, but these happened a couple years later. When West Coast Rail took over, to save money, many of the rail motor stations were closed. During the level crossing removals, many level crossings were also closed, including Cherry Street, Cororio Creek Road, and the Princess Highway. Starting closest to Melbourne, we have the South Kingsville Freight Line. Opened in 1887, it was built to access the once important port of Williamstown, and was turned to dual gauge in 1995. The Williamstown Line opened in 1859, and electrified in 1920. It comes off the Port Ferry Line at Newport, and you can still travel on it today. The Altona Line opened in 1885, and was extended to Laverton in 1985. It comes off the Port Ferry Line at Newport. The Williamstown Racecourse Line opened in 1855 and was closed in 1950. It came off the Port Ferry Line at Newport. The Geelong to Ararat Line was opened in 1859 and closed to passengers in the 1990s. It is currently open to freight and comes off the Port Ferry Line at North Geelong. The Queenscliff Line opened in 1879 and closed in 1976. It was reopened in 1979 as the Bellarin Peninsula Railway from Drysdale to Queenscliff. It comes off the Port Ferry Line at South Geelong. The Wensleydale Line opened in 1890 and closed in 1947. It came off the Port Ferry Line at Moriac. The Forest Line opened in 1889 and closed in 1957. It came off the Port Ferry Line at Berigua. The Colac to Ballarat line opened in the late 1890s and closed in 1953. It came off the Port Ferry line at Irrawarra. The Crows line opened in 1911 and closed in 1962. A narrow gauge platform had to be provided at Colac, and this is also where it came off at. The Alville line opened in 1923 and closed in 1930. It came off the Port Ferry line at Colac. The Timboon line was opened in 1889 and closed in 1987. It came off the Port Ferry line at Camperdown. The Mortlake line opened in 1889 and was closed in 1978. It came off the Port Ferry line at Turang. The Port Ferry to Portland line was opened in 1890 and closed in 1977. It came off the Port Ferry line at Kororit. Rolling Stock In the past, the Port Ferry line would be served by any locomotive and carriage. During the West Coast Rail days, the line would be served by T, B and S class diesels and the occasional Y or R class steam engine. Currently, the line is served by N class diesels and N set carriages. 
or the new long haul velocities, while the electrified section is served by electropolises, commenters, and Siemens nexuses. Accidents North Geelong, 1857. A Geelong train bound for Newport was travelling near North Geelong when the superintendent of the locomotive was knocked off the footplate and died due to subsequent fatal injuries. West Geelong, 1883. A goods train travelling to Ballarat exploded near a telegraph bridge. The driver and fireman were thrown clear of the wreckage, and no one was killed. Little River, 1884. A goods train bound for Geelong was meant to pass a passenger train at Little River. The Geelong goods train didn't stop at Werribee, as the line was set to clear. Once at Manor, the passenger train and goods train collided, killing three people. Newport, 1929. A rail motor running from Geelong to Melbourne derailed near Cororiot. Creek Road level crossing and smashed into the telegraph pole, killing one person. Little River, 1938. A passenger and goods train collided head on 100 meters south of Little River. No one was killed. Moriac, 1952. A Melbourne bound train and a Warnable bound train collided when the Warnable bound train was being shunted into a siding to let the Melbourne train pass. One woman was killed. Laverton, 1952. A newspaper train bound for Geelong ran into a stationary goods train. No one was killed. Laverton, 1976. A Melbourne train derailed at Laverton. It ran over the crossover at high speed, which caused it to smash into the supports of the Princess Highway overpass, killing one pa first class passenger. Werribee, 1995. A Warnable bound train derailed at Werribee. A motorist driving next to the rail line was crushed to death. Werribee, 2012. A city-bound goods train crashed into a car at Cherry Street level crossing. The woman inside the car died. The Cherry Street level crossing has since been removed. <music> Services In 1880, trains ran twice a day to Colac and back. In 1905, five trains ran to Geelong, with two trains continuing to Port Ferry and back. In 1928, five trains ran to Geelong, with two trains continuing to Port Ferry and back. In 1954, three trains ran to Warrnambool, with one service continuing to Port Ferry, and back. In 1961, three services ran to Warrnambool, with one service continuing to Port Ferry, and back. In 1966, two services ran with one terminating at Warrnambool and one terminating at Port Ferry. In 1975, one service ran to Port Ferry, and back. In 1977, services to Port Ferry ceased. And currently, trains to Warrnambool run five times per day, and back. And I'm not even going to think about metropolitan services or services which only terminate at Geelong. Where is the line today? Today the Port Ferry line has been shortened to Warnable. The section from Warnable to Port Ferry is now the Port Ferry Rail Trail. Many of the branch lines are closed, with the exception of the Williamstown, Geelong to Ararat, and Queenscliff lines. Goods trains are no longer allowed to run down the Warnable line, with some minor exceptions. Today, the Warnable Line is the only passenger service which runs to the southwest of Victoria. In 2012, Geelong and Warnable trains would run via Sunshine along the newly built regional rail link, going through Melbourne's developing western suburbs. The Metro Tunnel 2 is a proposal to link Newport on the Werribee and Williamstown lines and Rushville on the Mernda line. This would allow more trains to run more frequently on other parts of the network. Will services resume? Currently services still reach Warnable, and the rail reserve is still there, in the form of a rail trail. So services could resume, but I don't see the government getting rid of a rail trail just to bring back a train to the town 20 kilometers away from a railway station. Maybe the line from Warnable to Hamilton could be brought back, but I don't see enough patronage on that line to be brought back. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you liked this video about the Port Ferry line. History on the railway stations will be uploaded as a short. If you have any suggestions on what line I should do next, then leave a comment below. If not, I'll see you later.